That is entirely what she would do. Hi, folks. Hello. Oh, hi. Hi. How are you doing? It's I'm Friday. Yeah, it's Friday, which means it's time for another paint and slay. And we were trying to work on some things behind the scenes, but apparently mm -hmm. um, a certain champion is living true to her personality. I mean, the Voronika Spotlight blog is great, and the Voronika yeah. Spotlight video is awesome. And if only the two of them would connect. Yeah, you know, <laughs> that that's entirely Nika. So for, for a moment or two, we're going to be talking, but I'm yes. also going to be looking off here to the dum, side. Dum, I hope dum, you don't dum, mind dum, my, dum, my dum, 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 hardcore dum, dum. side eye as we take care of this. But yes, yes Voronika has been announced, and <gasps> yay, yay, yay it's... you've got... You've got a Hi. character, yay. I got a character in the game. Oh my gosh, it still hasn't registered yet. I'm still like, yeah, you know, that's the thing that's been happening. Because, I mean, obviously, do we have a win? Did it work? Yay! <laughs> <laughs> you being happy made it work. There we go. Oh, I'm going to put that into chat. So, so this is link to blog and video. There Yay! we go. So, I'm sorry, yeah. I was interrupting your announcement. No, it's cool. About no, it's, I mean, fun. we had this fun announcement happen. Um, thank you to B Dave uh, for making this announcement during the BDS live game yesterday, um, right at the very beginning. So, yes, Nika is going to be joining the Black Dice Society uh, champions in Yay. game next Wednesday, August 10th at 12 p.m. Pacific. So, make sure you log in and start claiming your own little Dark Lord. For your formation because trust me she's got some cool things happening i am honestly very very excited and yes ivy is responsible for this gorgeous key art i swear so pretty my heart and when she showed how she did voronika's dark lord but then also with her ghost form in the mirror mm -hmm. i was just like oh my god this is like my favorite thing ever um so yeah huge massive props to ivy for what she did with the key art and actually 
all of the artists. I can't wait for y'all to see uh, the various bits and pieces of art that have unfolded into the game. They all have done a great job with bringing Voronika to, I don't know if we can say to life because she's not exactly alive, but, you know, bringing her into her form. form. Uh, but yeah, and uh, the designers and the developers did a fantastic job as well, tying in Nika's story from Black Dice Society and what she does in game. Now, the cool thing is Lauren and I are going to have a special stream on the 15th. Uh-huh. So we'll have some in-game fun showing off what Voronika does as a champion. Uh, yeah. So make sure you tune in. We've decided on what, like 1 p.m. on that day? I'll be joining Midway in, correct? Yep. So yes. yeah, during our normal weekly patronage stream, uh, we will take a moment and we will bring on a Dark Lord and yeah. we will play with Voronika in the game and then also have V with me. So uh, we get to hang out twice, not next week, but the week after. Yeah, so. so there's gonna be lots. There's gonna be lots of stuff of Oranika happening, and um, you know, just because it's my champion and I can because it's fun, you're also gonna be able to check out a pretty cool skin that's gonna be happening for her. That's a mm -hmm. lovely theme pack. So take a look at this. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Cat did it's this so good. one, and I love it. I am like this giddy about this one. It so part of it is terrifying, mm -hmm. and then every once in a while. When I look at it, the vines in the hair don't quite register, and I just see big poofy hair. And yeah. I'm like, yes, absolutely. Yes. Give me 80s hair, Voronika. I'm here for it. Yes. Yeah. This is basically Voronika dialed up to, you know, beyond. She's up to, what is it, 11? She's gone mm -hmm. past 10. Uh, this is basically, you know, full on dreadlord, not dreadlord, dark lord form. And uh, her lovely companion, who has made an appearance a couple times in Black Dice Society, Hemlock the Kamadan. So y'all get snakes. another cat familiar, except he's got his lovely snake friends who help him hold things up and everything like that. Uh, so yeah, that's the skin that's gonna be coming also, out. Also, did they make the Hemlock pair, uh, pair, not Paradactyl, um, pair- Polydactyl? Polydactyl, I, there we go. His paws are rather bigger than others, uh, but he's also based off, you guys have all met him, Hemi. He's floating mm -hmm. around here somewhere. Um, Hemlock is based off of my own cat, Hemi. Um, so yeah. There's, there's another cat familiar for y'all, and I'm very excited for it. So yes, so those are the big announcements coming on my side of things. However, we have more fun announcements because it's going to be a busy week next week, everyone. Uh, so you may have seen it floating around. We have a familiar quest series, a uh, two, happening, and we have Latia Jaquiz joining us as the DM, and we have returning players, M. Montgomery, Michelle, and Eugenio, but we also have Gabe Hicks joining us as a new uh, core cast member. And Hope Lavella is joining us as a special guest for the first three episodes as Dottie again. I can't wait for you all to check out these familiars. In fact, if you've started playing already with the variants that came out on the third, you've gotten little sneak peeks of these fantastic familiars. However, let's let's just share them because dang it, they're cute. So the familiars- who are returning, they've taken on new forms. So Pest is now a Grimishka. Uh, and then we just had Mugen as a swarm of quippers go by. Gale, the miniature giant seahorse, which, oh my heart, the colors oh, is so gorgeous. Um, and then you have Gabe's familiar Marvel the Imp will be joining them. Now these are all going to be available as uh, DLC on Monday. Surprise! Mm -hmm. On Monday at 12 p.m. Pacific. So if you wanna add these cutie pies, to your game and have some extra help from all these wonderful familiars, you can do it on Monday. But don't forget to tune in on August 15th. There are so many dates floating in my head. August 15th at 5 p.m. Pacific to catch the cast of a Familiar Quest series two and see what new adventures and antics they get up to because yo, this is going to be another cute one. I can't wait to see what Latia does as DM. Um, so yeah. yeah, tune in, check it out. We'll see you there. Now, with all of that being said. And I'll, I'll break in real quick uh, for yes. those of you who recognize Latia but are going, I, I, where is she from? Where is she from? So yeah. she's Dahani on Rivals of Waterdeep and Yay! also has been a DM. So if yes. you if you, you were you were taking a look and, um, and recognized her from Idol Champions from before, you're right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's been an Idol Champions Presents uh, Trials of Mount Tiamat. Yep. To honey. So yes, very, very Yay. happy to have her join us. Uh, fantastic, talented DM, as is the entire cast. They are all talented players. Uh, so very much looking forward to seeing how this all pans out. 
Anyways, what we're going to be doing today is, I mean, obviously we've announced Voronika. So if you're wanting to ask questions about Voronika just in general as a character, hi, creator right here for you. Happy to answer questions as best I can. I mean, I don't want to give away spoilers because the game is still afoot for Black Dice, mm -hmm. but still. Uh, but what we thought would be fun is to kind of give a nod to my domain, Koshmar. And we're going to do uh, some lovely woodland critters called Treants. Uh, but give them a blighted spin. So if you look down below here, eh, there we go, right there. You can see mm -hmm. this happy treant with the pretty green leaves on top. We're not doing that. <laughs> no. No, we're nope, going to nope, have nope. fun with this one. Now, this is the uh, treant from D&D Nolzer's Marvelous, Marvelous Miniatures from WizKids. If you want to pick it up, the SKU on this one is 73532. Uh, you can go to your local game store and get that picked up. However... If you don't have a local game store near you, WizKids is helping us out and giving us these fantastic codes. So type in exclamation point mini for all the details on how to get a code for 10% off dndmini.com. I would say what the code is, but off the top of my head, my brain just went, nope. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's huge plant, 10 off. Yeah. There we go. Yep. So I was about to say, uh, one of our two amazing moderators, Jordan Yay. and Martin, are in chat. Uh, helping us out. If you do have any questions for either of us uh, or about Voronika or about the game mm -hmm. or about parad uh, paradactyls, <laughs> polydactyl kitties, go ahead and put those in chat with question in big capital letters before yes. your questions so that they can grab it and put it in this little backstage document. Mm -hmm. um, and it is at this point that I'm just going to admit I lost my tree in. Hi, everybody. I'm Lauren me. Urban. I'm a professional streamer. I, I lost my tree aunt, everybody. I had to order another one. It'll be here next week. Yeah. Fortunately, my my lovely partner had not a tree end, but something else that's kind of tree-like. So <laughs> I'm so. going to be joining in here and working on a slightly different mini. So if I don't yeah. show this mini off quite as often, that's why. Sorry. Yeah. Next week, I will have the tree end. I promise. But if anything, a lot of what I'm doing here will work for you for other um, tree-like creatures, whether it's actual blights uh, and things like that. You could apply what I have going on here to other, you know, they look like trees, they walk like trees, talk like trees uh, type of situation. So that all being said, I think it's time to get into painting and taking a look at this miniature. This miniature is pretty darn large. Um, here we have a miniature and I believe this one is classified as huge. Um, I think it's a huge. It's I'm going to look that up right now. No, just no. To... Sorry. Base is large. Base is large. Base is large. Base um, is large. No, base Ooh. is huge. No, you're right. It is huge. So yeah, base so is huge. So in the game, they're considered huge. Yeah. Yep. Base is huge. I'm looking at the base next to me. So you can see they're pretty significant. I mean, look, this guy can pick them up and carry them around. Do, 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 do. I think mm -hmm. it's even made that you can pop. Yeah. You could even if you wanted to. Not referring to any movie whatsoever. You can put... <laughs> You know, the PC on the top as the treant walks around just saying. Uh, but yeah, it's got I mean, some fantastic detail. There's gorgeous wood grain going on here, which my lights, you can see it a little bit better. You even have things oh, yeah. like these great mushrooms that are growing around the ankles and all that and a mossy beard. So we're going to have some fun bringing this out. But we're also going to do some cool kit bashing next week and adding things like Spanish moss. So today, the name of the game is to get base colors on. Next week, we're going to do some cool detail and accent work. So to get started, we're going to go for black. The other fun thing that I'm doing for this mini is I'm pulling the paints from the Chimera Paint Night Kit to show you you can make these paints go further than just the one mini that comes in the kit. So tapping into black first, which yes, I know we have Vallejo in bottles already in black, but quite frankly, this has been opened. I know I need to use it up. Uh, so I'm going to get started using the Pot of Black from of black. the Chimera Paint Night Kit or the paint kit, I should say. And then you do want to thin this out because you want this to go onto the entire miniature. And the point is to have this fall into the recesses of the details of this mini. So Ooh, okay. I'm going to thin this out to the consistency of skim milk. So I'm just going to take a big old paintbrush you can see here, a conkin one. And I'm going to add this to, I'm doing paper plates right now just because I know this is something I'm going to be using up today. So I'm going to do a couple of healthy scoops, like so. And this is pretty thick. Like, this is almost ketchup-like, so I need it thinner. Yeah. So I have just my handy little dropper of clean water. Makes a difference. 
I mean, the nice thing about being so thick is that means a little bit does go a long mm-hmm. way. So really that's does. just another reason why those pots, yeah. why we're using them up because you know yeah. you might as well you might as well use them and get get some more mileage out of them mm-hmm. all right so exactly. you said skim milk yeah like skim milk all right so kind of kind of watery but not entirely watery <laughs> i think i'm there also once again because we're using the pots you're gonna hear me uh, a lot yeah. because uh, just opening and closing these are always mm-hmm. a little bit of a challenge, but I, I yeah. appreciate that they have a strong seal on them. So Perfect. I'm not going to complain. And while we're mixing this up, we did have a couple of, of quick kitty questions come Ooh. in. Um, the lurking writer asked the question that I asked is hemlock polydactyl. And then uh, Severin Blaine wants to know what's a polydactyl? Polydactyl, it is a term used for cats who have, traditionally cats in their front paws have um, four four toes and a dew claw on cats. A polydactyl cat has over four toes and a, pol- and a dew claw on them. So my cat Hemingway, he actually has six, six toes and a dew claw. And then I have to map... Uh, math five <laughs> five toes and a dew claw on right and left respectively and then his back feet have five toes which is also polydactyl for back toes um along with dew claws so yeah he's got he's got um lots of footsies and it look like mittens if he comes up and sits on my lap i'll show them off to you but his his feet look like mittens because of it like but- he's got he's got a thumb and he can use it like yeah. a thumb it's kind of like what are you doing <laughs> he's able to do doors and things and that's why when we were looking at the Comedon, it's like, that might mm-hmm. be paradactyl. Paradactyl. Why do yeah. I keep saying paradactyl? Poly. I like to think he might be polydactyl, but hey. I mean, maybe he is cannon. also a, a flying dinosaur. You don't know. Yeah. I mean, strange things maybe happen. Maybe there's pterodactyls in, in Koshmar. <laughs> uh, it wouldn't surprise me. No, absolutely not. Especially after um, the not not the one that just happened at Gen Con, but the episode before that. I, mm. I I won't go into details for spoiler reasons. If you haven't caught up on Black Dice Society, it is excellent. Um, but yes, after after arriving, it wouldn't surprise me if there were yeah, I uh, put some, some weird things flying around. Yeah, I put some dark things into Koshmar because uh, you know it's my domain, it's my creation, it's my artistic license for what things look like. Yeah. <laughs> and it's it's not necessarily a happy place. No, no, it looks pretty at some angles, and in some angles, be careful. Just saying. But that's nature, right? I mean, right. that's that's truly yeah. nature. Is it can be beautiful, but also mm-hmm. um, it will it will kill you very quickly. Yeah, yeah, and that's just it. I mean, Nika, like you know, she and her family avidly follow Sylvanus, who's a little bit more, you know more like about nature mm-hmm. um so stuff like that factored into her creation and motivation and everything like that for sure when i was figuring things out but yeah i have a, I have a fantastic board set up of all these different bits of inspiration and it's kind of fun <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's, so, yeah. it's really it is really fun being able to expand outside of your character something mm-hmm. that is is that important you know like yeah. getting the entire the entire land of kushmar but like uh also just the the trees and the plants and like you know what would that world entail mm-hmm. like that is super cool to be able to just yeah. craft that whole thing based on the character that you're playing so yeah so i definitely when setting up the paint notes for this guy uh, he's going to fit in beautifully into Kashmar without question. <laughs> yeah. And now, uh, so Nika in the show mm-hmm. is a dreadlord, is rather powerful. Yes. Was it interesting trying to work? I'm just going to ask questions because why not? Uh, yeah. Was it difficult or interesting to work with the CNE team to come up with powers for her that? Are, we're not so overpoweringly powerful because she's showing up as a dreadlord next to, you know, say, Orkira, who's uh-huh. just a cleric. <laughs> I think the way they have handled it was well done. Um, mm. And they've definitely worked with Nika's story along the way because uh, Nika's actually going to start off as a ghost, is her ghost form. When, uh, you know, 
before before they got her um to the point where she was able to turn into a dark lord she was a ghost for a little bit after being killed at her wedding just that's that's a basic synopsis of Veronica's story um so she's going to show up first as a ghost and then there are things you'll need to do to get her to dark lord level and then the cool things really do start to kick in and happen so i think it's a great way to handle it. it's like yes you will have a dark lord in your formation but like Nika did through her own process in the story of Black Dice Society, there's going to be a, l- a little work that has to happen beforehand. Um, yeah. We'll have so to do a few I things. thought I thought that was a really clever way of handling it, and it the way it connected to how Nika would do things as well. I was very much happy about that, for sure. Good. Yeah. And if you do go and watch uh, the video and read the blog. Uh, mm-hmm. the spotlight it will the, the blog goes into very very specific detail but the video gives yeah. you a really nice overview of uh, what that whole process is and what it looks like because she looks mm-hmm. really cool so yeah, yeah it's I'm, neat and the the transformation everything that's going to happen in the animation it's gorgeous mm-hmm. oh i was so impressed and so happy with it they really they put a lot of consideration and thought into it both on the design team as well as the art team working together and i was just I'm pleased as punch, quite frankly. Good. Yeah. As well you should be. Yeah, it's exciting. Um, uh, Gray L-Shaped wants to know, uh, has a question that has come up with other minis before, mm. uh, but not necessarily the ones that we've painted on here, is a mm-hmm. miniature that is bigger than your hand a miniature? Yes. <laughs> these these stay a miniature until it gets to a point where even my own body can't be used for scale, and then it becomes a maxature. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know we've talked about that a bit uh, yeah. with with Tiamat. Oh, Tiamat yeah. was the one. She, who, yeah, called called miniature into question. Yeah, absolutely. Um, she literally the wingspan on that miniature maxature uh, is my inseam. So showing off Tiamat while I'm holding here is quite comical. And there have been a couple other things <laughs> that, you know, Whiskits has put out in the past that I've been used for scale. And it's just flipping funny how big some of these do get. Um, but yeah, for me, as long as there's something that I can paint and keep under camera in one solid piece, it's still a miniature. If I have to start like getting a majorly lofted camera above my head and work in bits and pieces, as maybe that's so much not a miniature anymore. <laughs> yeah. Also, it is a miniature in relationship to the real it thing. Is. It is. In so. relationship to a real tree end, it's mm-hmm. tiny. It mm. is. But yeah, I do I do totally get that. Is it really a miniature anymore? Well. Mm-hmm. Uh Agreed. and uh, the lurking writer wants to know, sorry if I missed this, but is the model pre-primed? Are you prepping the prime for painting now? Which, that was a fun sentence to say. <laughs> it The Windows, the, 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 the WizKids, Dainzy, Nolzer's Marvelous Miniature line, they all come primed ahead of time. You don't have to worry about priming them. What I'm doing is I am putting black on in the beginning because of the type of wood effect that I want to have going for this tree. I am going for a decaying, decrepit, beat up looking wood finish or bark look to this treant, which is why I'm starting with black. I want this to be dark and sinister looking, uh, which is why I'm starting us with black. And I really want to get that black into the recesses because this has so many awesome details. It's Mm. really going to help bring out that bark texture even more so by doing this. But it's also why I want to make sure this first layer is very thin paint because I don't want to overload the mini with excess paint where it's not needed. Now, if we weren't making this a blighted tree end, if we were mm-hmm. making this just, you know, as can be seen on the bottom over there, right? would you be doing the same thing just with a lighter color or yep. a greenish color? Yep, I would probably cool. start off with the chocolate brown, actually. Ooh. It would be a good starting color. But same thing, I'd make sure it be a thinned out level, make sure it's getting into the nooks and crannies, it would just start off um, at a lighter tone. So. Very cool. This way. Yeah. Um, the Devil Crayon wants to know, is there a different term for cats with multiple dew claws? It's basically polydactyl. Is yeah. How it's, yeah. That's just a, an overarching term yeah. for yeah, if they have cat multiple has more toes. Claws. Yeah, multiple claws. It's basically polydactyl. Yeah. 
the fun thing about the black is uh, eventually you get to the point of, is this shiny or did I miss or is a spot? it in a spot? Yep. Yep. <laughs> That's the game you start playing. Is it shiny? Shiny or skipped? Shiny or skipped? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm starting to get to that point on this one and I'm going to have to just grab it by a place that is uh, probably dry. We'll go there. <laughs> um. Ooh, okay. So we mm -hmm. have an actual Black Dice Society uh, plot question, which I Ooh. will uh, I will preface with, first off, that's awesome because I'm also a fan of Black Dice Society. Second, uh, there may be some spoilers in here if you have not seen the whole season. So just a little bit of a heads up. And third, uh, V has the right, like all content creators, to not mm -hmm. answer things because of spookiness. Because that all being said, uh -huh. Yes, for, for spooky reasons. Bay Neon asks, reasons. in the very first episode, Voronika married Desmond's brother, but it is hinted at that she would have preferred Desmond himself. Was mm -hmm. there any way that Desmond could have convinced her not to become a dreadlord? Mm. That's very interesting because, quite frankly, um... Nika's choice to become a dreadlord had nothing to do with Desmond. In terms of, I, you know, mm. that was her choice. She's the one who took the crown to smash it on Zabilna's head and take Zabilna's powers. Um, so uh, it's not one of those things where, you know, Desmond could have at that moment been like, you know, don't do that with the crown because at that point Nika was ready for it. Um, as for what will happen in terms of future interactions, tune in and see. I will leave it at that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and we've, we've had a couple of, uh, interactions post Dark Lord. I mean, the mm -hmm. last couple of episodes for sure. But yeah. then, um, if you haven't seen Idol Champions Presents Go to the Raven Queen, slight spoilers for this, yeah. um, Voronika does show up for a, a, a little bit twice. Mm -hmm. Yes, twice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in voiced and uh, <laughs> I, I like to call it the Obi Wan projection. You know, you, are you there? Much, are you yeah. really there? Yeah. 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 Um, so we, we got it. We've had a chance to see everybody interacting with her a little bit. So mm -hmm. she's complex. You know, yeah. she's like a good onion with lots of layers. And the fun thing will be because uh, now that she's out, uh, some. A couple people have been like, hey, how does Orkira feel about Voronika? Because we did meet. We did very, very briefly yes. meet. Yes. Um, and as far as Orkira is concerned, because she knows nothing about you, Desmond and Tatiana did not go into pretty much any details except that you were a friend and now it got complicated. Yeah. And so as far as Orkira is concerned, you're a spooky friend who is spooky. But hey, everyone's got that friend who's right. who's got the aesthetic, you know? She's the, you know, she's the creepy goth girl who sits in the back of the class. Yeah. <laughs> you helped, you helped us mm -hmm. uh, by helping Desmond and Tatiana. So as, yep. as far as Orkira is concerned, all right, you're, yeah. you're probably a good person if they yeah. liked you. <laughs> 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 Which I, I find amusing. And I think probably uh, the other members of that party might have similar, you know, eh, she seems spooky and there's obviously history there, but she helped yeah. us. So she's got to be yeah. good, right? Yeah. Because <laughs> we so. have no idea you're a dark lord. We have no idea of any of that history. We just know you you showed up with cool weapons and an aesthetic. There you go. <laughs> Made a statement appearance. Trying hey, to get listen. This guy's beard. There is, there's nothing wrong with having a, a strong... A strong sense of personal style. Yes. <laughs> She's definitely going to love. Yeah. Absolutely have uh, a look for her. Uh, the lurking writer wants to know, what is Helen's opinion on this new beastie? I mean, uh, Helen's I think she, probably happy about everything. Well, I mean, she was running away this after, this morning, so I don't know. <laughs> we shall see. Maybe they'll become fast friends later on. Yeah. Helen, you know what? Just like Voronika herself, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes blighted treants just need a little bit of warming up to. Yeah. 
you just need to get used to them. You know, yeah. uh, blighted treants, dark lords, and necromancers. It, they just take a little while. Yeah. You just have to hang out with them and, you know, learn their good no. traits and, you know, convince them not to uh, be making zombies while you're around. And then you're, you know, it's all okay. <laughs> Please don't make a zombie, sir. I mean, that was that was a big part of Orkira getting along with uh, a necromancer that she knows from D4, which is mm -hmm. basically like, just just don't make anything undead with me around and warn me if you've got undead around. Don't don't surprise me with your undead or else right. I, I will just kill it because I won't know. Right. Yep. 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 <laughs> you know, consent is not only sexy, but it, it prevents uh, exactly. turning. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Fair. Um, let's see. Rough Rider 91 has a technical question about how Voronika is going to work, which I'm not sure if I can answer adequately. Mm. Uh, how will Voronika's inner circle spec choice be handled with Modron automation saved formations? So when you save a formation, um, you, you do have to tell it what specs. The interesting thing being, you won't know ahead of time with that first specialization choice. So I'm mm. honestly unsure. Um, that will probably be a question that we'll I'll have to get some more clarification on. Uh, also, Jordan is putting in the backstage chat. I'm getting Breakfast Club vibes when Vornika gets that makeover, <laughs> which I love. Um, if ah. if one of the the lovely people, one of our lovely mods, because we've we've got two of you could mm -hmm. uh, maybe ask and you know maybe if sean's around or yeah. if someone else is around if we've got any clarification on that because i am honestly unsure i'm not sure either yeah the second one should be very straightforward but as far as that first specialization uh who you pick it could be interesting now mm -hmm. i think if i remember correctly if you reset it doesn't pick i don't think it picks new um I think that first specialization doesn't pick new champions. I think it will give you the same three over and over and over again. I think you have to, you know what? I'm not going to say anything else because yeah, I'm we'll not sure. Out. Well, we'll find out for sure. I'm, yeah. I'm sure someone has thought of it and I just don't know. Yeah. Um, gray L shaped asks, uh, when does one want a dark undercoat versus a light undercoat, which we, we kind of talked about in specific terms with the tree end, but, mm -hmm. uh, besides just the, uh, we're going for the blighted look versus we're going for a regular tree ant look. Are there other times in where you would pick between a dark undercoat and a light undercoat? Yeah. It depends on how intense you want the color to be. If you want more vibrant tones and brighter tones then go with a lighter undercoat, if you want darker, moody, um, muted tones, dark undercoat is really the best way to go. Also, I have been attacked by the black. Oh no. <laughs> is all over my fingers. Eh, it's okay. The blight hath found you. Yep. Yep. I've, I've become one with with the black <laughs> and the, the blighted. It's I mean, good thing it washes off pretty easily. Yeah, absolutely. I I had a I had a tiny mishap. I I touched a place I shouldn't have touched. That's my <laughs> own fault. Oh, this dear. this week has been the the week for me of nothing has really gone wrong, but everything has gone a little sideways. Sideways. It, it has yeah. it, it has been a crab walking type of week. Yeah. <laughs> Like, like you can like, still get there. It's just not the direction you anticipated. Yeah. Like this mini will get painted. Is it the mini I was expecting? No. no. This mini will get painted. Will I get paint all over my hands? Yes. Yep. <laughs> I'm I'm kind of excited for this week to be over. But you know yeah, what? We made it. We one. made it. Woo! And also the, the joy of um the joy of talking about this new champion who is a druid I... after last night i had my own druid adventures and then mm -hmm. and then uh just just for v i wore my druid shirt i, don't I know love it you can see it i love it that's the circle of the leaf this is from awesome. zergester's line but yeah i love the shirt Aww. i don't get to wear it nearly as often as i want to there you go <laughs> grab uh gray l shaped says a crab walking type of week I'm filing that phrase away for future use. Mm -hmm. Go for it. Please do. <laughs> oh, oh, 
I love you, Luke. Luke is in the chat and says, I have spray black at the ready. Would you like me to give that mini a quick coat of black? <laughs> no, no, no. I appreciate it. Um, we're, we've talked before about kind of the differences between using a spray and using mm -hmm. the, the, the paintbrush and why, yeah. especially with minis, it's, it's a little, it's a little better to use the paintbrush and have a little yeah. more control over that. Also yep. at this point, it's almost done. And yeah, <laughs> I've already, I've already made the mess up. So, eh. Yeah. Unless you had something like an airbrush set up, I'd be reluctant to use just a general spray can black on this because this has so many deep recessed grooves. You're still going to have to go back in and move a paintbrush around to make sure that the spray paint hasn't puddled and pooled in these deeper recesses. Um, yeah. And also because of these deep grooves, chances are you'll have to go back in and hand paint touch-ups because the spray paint spray paint won't be able to get into it with a can. Airbrush is a completely different story. You could airbrush this and yeah, sure, absolutely go for it. However, live streaming with an airbrush, mm -mm. not so much. No, not and we so do much. have an airbrush. Yeah. We, we fooled around with it a little bit, especially with minis with a, a friend of ours mm -hmm. and it was fun, but it's definitely a, a very different technique. It is. And even in the hands of someone as skilled as my my wonderful partner artist Luke McKay, it takes a little bit of getting used to. It does, and yeah. it does make a little bit more of a mess. Like, yes, I'm 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 joking about how I'm covered in black paint at the moment, yeah. but this is small compared to you know when yeah. when airbrushing goes wrong. You also need a booth. You also need ventilation. You also should be technically wearing a mask and eye protective gear. There's a lot more that goes to airbrushing itself. Yeah, uh, you can get some fantastically gorgeous techniques with it, but um, you know, keeping yourself and your workstation clean and safe and everything, there's a few more bits that go into it as opposed to pick up brush, pick up water, pick up, you know, paper plate and go. Type yeah. Of approach. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, when we were having fun with that, we were in a open garage. Mm -hmm. Um we were only we were basically just doing a base coat on uh yeah. a blue dragon, I believe. And it was literally oh, just like yeah. Oh, let's let's check this thing out let's, let's see how it. it works yeah yeah so yeah stuff like that totally makes sense especially the larger minis if you want to get a base color on oh mm. yeah just break yeah. out that airbrush and do your thing if i ever properly. give in to buying that unpainted you want to get your airbrush going to get your colors on there for your base colors absolutely that absolutely. yeah that is where i might break out that airbrush time again. saver yeah, yeah. Also, it'll just be fun to be like, I was airbrushing a dragon the other day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rough, Rough Rider 91 question. Lauren, are you sad that Orkira will never be in Voronika's inner circle? Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, that's a thing. Like it, it, it happens and I understand it's hard to, it's super hard to place champions and um, Voronika and Orkira being in different places was not high on the list of requirements. And so mm -hmm. it's, it's okay, but yeah, it, yeah. I, I was sad about Dahani being in my same place and now I'm sad about Voronika, but there you go. Yeah. yeah to, so another reason you can't put together a complete, um, uh, Court of the Raven Queen formation. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's like, ah, but you know what? That's okay. I think... Um, me being sad about that is a small price to pay for Voronika being in a slot that makes a lot of sense, yeah. especially for, uh, working with the whole Black Dice Society. So, yeah. you know, that'll it happen. Bummer. It was a yeah. bummer. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? That's just one of those things that happens whenever, oh, yeah. uh, whenever there's a champion so gets placed. Much. Yeah. There's so much that goes into it. Mm hmm So... Yeah, when when they told me where Dahani was going, I'm like, but, but, but oh, I'm there. I won't, I won't be in the same place as Dahani. Yeah. And I was already, I was already sad because Deacon, because I wasn't going to get to be mm -hmm. Doom. But you know, you know what? That's yep. that's the price we pay. Oh well. Yeah. Okay, hold on. I am putting this guy down so I can actually paint this space without it wobbling all over the place. I actually ended up doing that, even though my mini is much smaller than yours. I end up doing kind of the same heavy. thing. Yeah. Yeah, just to because it's they're big enough that you you yeah. don't want to actually put them on the mount, but mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right. Right now I'm playing the 
Did I miss it, or is it still just vet? Yeah. Playing play that game. <laughs> what happened? I'm just, I'm seeing a bunch of things all at once. And so I'm, I'm prioritizing. So Jordan says, I struggle wanting to put all my friends in the same formation. Yeah, same. Uh-huh. Yep. yep. Absolutely the same. Easy thing. Um, all right, I'm going to paint this rock while I'm at it. <laughs> oh yeah, good idea. Because it comes with it comes with a stone that I'm gonna that we're gonna put into its hand. You know, so we throw out stones. Uh, but I want to get some black on this one as well. However, I'm quickly rinsing my brush down a little bit, going back to this paint and adding a little bit more water based on what was left on the paintbrush, just because I can, and yeah. treat this more like a wash. See, as opposed to a coating. Because I, I want this to get into the recesses of the stone, but I know this stone is going to be more of a gray color. So it's mm -hmm. okay if it's a lighter coating. It'll work for what I need it to do. Uh, Lurking Rider has a request that Helen be added to the game somehow. I mean, there are ropers I mean, in yeah, yeah. somewhere. I, I don't remember offhand what that's, adventures, that's a, but I'm pretty sure. Talk to Dupuy about that one. That's a Dupuy request. <laughs> <laughs> but do you want <laughs> Helen? I mean, Helen would have to be a familiar, Hi! right? Absolute baby Helen. Oh, <gasps> with all the different tentacles being like D -d 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 baby Helen, the big smile. <laughs> mm. I love it. I love mm. it so much. Take a note, please. Right, so one of our mods, please take a note. Jack, I'm gonna like message to that we need a baby Helen familiar. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think Alexis would have fun drawing her too. <gasps> Could you imagine the key art for Helen? I mean, I know familiars don't usually get key art unless it's a familiar quest, sure but one. but yeah. but Yeah. <laughs> I love how Helen has taken on a life of her own. Hel I I did not expect that when I was painting Helen. Helen was just a fun little painting on the side type of thing, and now she's, you know, come say hi. Hi! Yeah. Oh, God, you can see there Helen. There she is. Hi! Her. This is Helen, for those who don't know who Helen is. She she makes her little cameos for us every so often, and also I use her for our social media posts. <laughs> she's amazing. Uh-huh. You gotta love a dangerous mini that also just looks like they're happy all the time. And that's just it. Always happy and eager to be here, which I will take, even though you are covered in cat hair, girl. What happened? All right. So I was basically hoping that this dries a little bit more before we go into our next phase. How is yours doing? Is yours getting dry? Uh, it's getting there. It's getting there. It's um, getting there? Yeah. Mine also has a lot of nooks and crannies. Yeah. Uh, it's not going to show up so well on, on this screen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It kind of just looks like a big black rock, but oh. it... It did. No. It does have a lot of fun nooks and crannies, and I think that got everywhere. And it is, there you go. It's, it is still sticky. It's it's getting there though. I'm also uh, very quickly asking a question that Ooh, hopefully we can get question for you. Um, so yeah, the thing we're gonna do is have some fun next week. I'm gonna vamp a little bit here myself. We're going to do Spanish moss, but believe it or not, this is what we're gonna be using for the Spanish moss, which is just a basic cotton ball. So next week, if you're joining us and playing the home game of painting with us, what you're going to want to do is get some cotton balls, get yourself some Mod Podge Ultra Matte, some super glue, and we're going to have some fun making some really neat details. You can do a lot with your miniatures and cotton balls, believe it or not. Um, I did a Moonstone Dragon Mini where I took the cotton and I actually turned it into the fluff on the Moonstone Dragon's chest and down the back and everything like that. It worked out quite well. So it'll be fun to show you this little, you know, uh, trick for how you can use household items to do cool things with your manis. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, hi, Sir Narvi. Uh, Sir Narvi has a question. V's background mat is awesome. Is that neoprene and are they for sale somewhere? Neoprene, um, yes. For sale, no. Yeah. Anything that has our logo on it is has been made for fun. Yeah. And has been uh, giveaway stuff and, you know, stuff for other content creators and sadly not for sale um, because we are a digital company mm -hmm. <laughs> and making something for sale that is a physical product is hard. Yeah, exactly. 
you have to be careful about that. All right, so I'm gonna go over to Chocolate Brown now. Um, and this was from the Chimera Paint Night Paint Kit as well. I keep saying Paint Night Kit because it used to be Paint Night Kit. <laughs> and... I mean, even you're not really wrong. So I know, I know, but still, I'm trying to be good about right. you know getting it right. Chocolate Brown. Chocolate Brown. It looks like it. Honestly, it does kind of look like Hershey sh- Hershey syrup. You just have Hershey. Sweet, pretty. Yeah. It looks like mm-hmm. Hershey's syrup. And what we're going to do is we're going to dry brush this onto all of the um, treant bark area. Uh, you don't have to worry all so much right. about the base quite yet. So I'm just going to load up the brush, pull it away until it starts getting a little streaked out. Now, this is not going to be as evident because we are taking a brown onto a black. This is going to be a subtle build, which is what I want to have for this. Um, but that's basically pick a branch and start dry brushing. There's so and, much um, I'm doing a little bit of all right. What limb is dry? Yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing. Mm. I'm looking at what limb is dry and where I can go from here. Um, and basically just building this brown on two. And you can see it does change the color a bit. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, we have uh, so for those of you who are actively playing Idol Champions at the moment, uh, this is a free time gate weekend. And as has become Sweet. tradition, we are starting to have people asking for help with their time awesome. gates, which is awesome. Um, I'll, I'll give my usual disclaimer, which is there's no wrong answers. Also, you will get some awesome, uh, awesome direction from chat. Oftentimes, several people will suggest completely different mm-hmm. uh, which one you want to go for. They're all right. Because eventually you want to get them all. Uh, that being said, also sometimes knowing more about your setup and what other champions you have can help. So with that, Azimuth2601 wants to know Artemis, Strix, or Rosie? Um, Artemis is an interesting DPS that um, works with a couple of very specific formations and also is uh, works in a couple of formations that not a lot of other champions do. So I probably go for Artemis simply because of that fact that Artemis is going to help you in a lot more difficult locations, difficult variants that you're not going to be able to use that many other champions on. Um, both Strix and Rosie are fun. Strix mm-hmm. is probably Strix is definitely a much better support. So if you're mm-hmm. not interested in a DPS and you're looking for a support, I would go Strix. Yeah. Um, and Ye Old Dice Goblin is asking uh, some specific questions about Voronika. I just skimmed Voronika's spotlight and I'm confused. What does she do? She is support. Mm-hmm. Ah, it's stuck to my finger. She is support. <laughs> Um, and basically you, you power her up and the more powerful she gets, the more, um, she helps the whole team get more yeah. powerful. Yeah. Which is kind of how she functions right now in black dice. So I find that that's, that was one of the things I was like, okay, that, yes, that's a good fit. Yeah. We're designing her. Sorry. I'm trying to take a no, quick, get it. A I'm, closer I'm look. Same. as yeah, you're right about how the brown is a little hard to see. Yeah. It'll start making more sense as we get to other layers. Like it always does. Yeah. Well, I don't know what's going on outside, but hopefully you can't hear that. No. <laughs> I have the windows open because once again, it's it's become actually nice here in the Pacific Northwest and I want to have the window open. I'll take advantage of that wherever you can get it. Good grief. Yeah. But but every once in a while, there's a truck or an entire mm. murder of crows. Sometimes both at the same time. I mean, that's appropriate, a murder of crows, and we're dealing with something from Koshmar. Yeah, yeah. It works. But, for you it. know, they're very insistent on being paid attention to. Oh, they really are. Yeah. yeah. I have two that every morning they are, like, dancing on the rooftop. Literally, you can hear the tick, 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 <laughs> Please, time to get up and give me treats mm. yep the crows and the squirrels they get very insistent super insistent <laughs> hello um let's see evil turnip tv do you have any suggestions for painted mini storage not show pieces just good enough for the table i was looking into 
The kind of stackable bins sold for scrapbooks, maybe some mm -hmm. soft foam to steady the minis with more delicate extremities weapons. Do you have any suggestions? Yeah, after the holiday season, get yourself some ornament storage bins. Ooh. That is actually a really great, great way. Apparently, it's a really great Apparently. way to store those. You can also get fish tackle boxes. Those will work well, too. Um, things like sock uh, organizers for drawers. Those are great for your larger miniatures. You can pop those into each section of where you would normally put like rolled up socks. And those are got well for the bigger miniatures. So there's a lot of different um, home storage organization repurpose that actually work really well for mini storage organization. I, I never would, would have that. thought of ornament boxes. That is such a mm -hmm. good idea. Yep. Yep. And just um, with any of your minis, especially if they're going to be, if you're going to be moving the boxes around and things like that, um, I do recommend getting things just like little bubble wrap sleeves. So you can pop them into, like they uh, have it for uh, jewelry and things like that. Various size of bubble wrap sleeves. They're like little envelopes and you can pop your mini into that and the bubble wrap will protect the mini. So if it's getting jostled a little bit, it won't chip. Mm. So a little extra step that's definitely worth it. If it's especially like if you want to be a traveling DM uh, or if you know you're going to be moving them around a lot, just take that extra precaution. He's worth it. I have also found in a pinch, a couple paper towels. Mm -hmm. If you need to, if you've got a mini that has, um, like you said, the delicate bits, or yeah. you just want to add that extra little bit of protection and you don't have yeah. anything on hand, just a, a couple paper towels. Cause mm -hmm. when we're in between shows, I store the mini that we're working on in with my supplies and I don't have anything uh, like that, although now I will be looking. Mm -hmm. And just giving it a good wrap up in some paper towels, I've never yeah. had a problem with anything yeah. flaking off, you know, as, as long as it's a dry it's been mini. Dried. Active. Yeah, make sure it's yeah. dry and cured paint. Uh, you can Absolutely. also use uh, like grocery store bags, plastic bags. Uh, quite frankly, I've wrapped many a mini up recently to get them ready for moving and uh, have gone through my supply of, you know how you select like, the old plastic bags for multi-purpose uses? Yeah. Yeah. Those are also very helpful for protecting your minis and just storing them. So Don't do newspapers. Very... Oh. Because <laughs> the ink can transfer. Oh, uh, yeah. That makes Especially sense. Especially if it gets wet. So in a good way, I am actually out of plastic bags. And we've been out for a while. That's good. Because around here, uh, all of the grocery stores have moved to the uh to either mm -hmm. paper bags or uh and or because often it's paper bags and you have to pay extra for the paper bags so kind mm -hmm. of encouraging people to get the canvas bags and to to use those reusable bags yep. which is a good thing yeah um and so yeah overall it's a very good thing what the the, the small, tiny little thing that kind of sucks about it is I used those plastic bags. They were absolutely perfect for my bathroom garbage. Yeah. <laughs> it was the perfect thing for my bathroom garbage. And so now I have to find something else to use. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For, and and so I'm trying to find a, a not a safe option, a, a, a eco-friendly option because it feels like it would be bad to go along with, you know, saving you know, yeah, helping out I the environment and everything by not getting plastic bags and then go get plastic bags from my garbage. I found some that are supposed to like, you know, biodegrade. So I don't think they're yeah. plastic, like they're, whatever the blend is, they actually do degrade down. You can buy them yeah. in various sizes. Um, I actually earmarked, not earmarked it, bookmarked it for myself. Um, so I can get those for things like, yeah, like bathroom garbage cans or like, you know, when my, because I would, and I'm, I would save those plastic bags because it's also good for cat litter stuff. So once that's all run out, I'm going to need uh, something for, you know, cleaning the cat boxes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. There are some other options that they're coming up with, which I'm trying to be cognizant of what it is and how long it's going to be around. Yeah, definitely. The, this, I have uh, one of those really, really small garbage cans with an actual lid on it for the bathroom, mm -hmm. which makes me super happy, but it is small enough that it has been difficult to find bags for, you know, first world problems for right. sure. Right. Not the end of the world, but you know, you still have to sort of regroup and replan type of situation. Yeah. 
Yeah. And definitely like the next time I move, uh, since the last time I moved was many, many, many years ago and you could still get plastic bags at the mm -hmm. grocery store. So I basically moved with everything wrapped in plastic bags. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I just used the plastic bags as, as my filler for any of the boxes yeah. that I needed. And it was great. Uh, I will have to come up with another, another way to do that now. Yeah, It's a good thing. That's the way it should be, but it is something it's a definitely a difference I got to keep in mind for the next time I move. Yeah. Yeah. I, I made a point of just like saving all the packaging I got from various shipments and all the plastic bags I had, et cetera, et cetera. You can even go to things like um, post office. They have recycle bins for their PO boxes. And oh. they have some, well, at least the ones near me, they have one that's specifically for the local newspaper. If people mm -hmm. choose, they don't want to keep it. Um, so you can actually ask if you could, you know, snag the newspapers in the recycle bin and more often than like, yeah, sure. Why not? Um, and you can use yeah. that for packaging, padding stuff. At least yeah. that's what I've been doing. I've got to fix a, I, I, I've found a fairly large section that I somehow uh -oh. missed. You know, so that I, doesn't surprise me because this is a fairly large mini. Yeah. So I'm just going to have to go back here. Hmm. Fortunately, my black is still very wet. So, oh. Oh no! And, you, well, not the, the not the on the mini. The yeah, my my puddle on my you mean the puddle paper on the plate. plate. <laughs> yeah, puddle on the plate. That's Sorry, I should have been I should have been more specific about what was actually no, still very totally very very cool. wet. No worries. There we go. I guess it, I guess it's actually helping to confirm that I didn't go too thick on the black because mm -hmm. uh, if it's either coming off or if I'm missing that much that quickly that easily then. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think I yeah. think I did okay. There you go. Uh, and, oops, right there. Um. Okay. More stuff came in. Moltari. Moltari. Yeah, Moltari. Question: New player, first time gate. Hey, welcome. Hi. Glad you could join us. Crond, Spurt, or Lucius. Worth oh. noting, I don't have Dritz yet as a gauge for how many champs I have. Okay. So. Ooh. I, I'm, I'm leaning towards spurt. I'm leaning towards spurt because spurt is a really good support and also a fun one. Yeah. Um, and a Lucius is, is a DPS that if you're going to go after the heroes of Eros, uh, definitely go for Lucius and Krond is a good DPS, but takes work. Yeah. I'm so gonna... I think, spurt. yeah, for, yeah, for a new player, uh, I think you're going to get the most bang for your time gate buck by going for spurt. And then, mm -hmm. of course, you get to see that awesome uh, <laughs> that awesome death animation when he sets off his time. ultimate, yep. which you every absolutely time. have to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. Agreed. Oh, and Evil Turnip T is saying, store the biodegradable plastic bags in a dark cupboard. Sunlight accelerates the degrading and you end up with an unusable mess in the box. Thank you. That makes sense. Good to know. Fortunately, where I store my plastic bags is under the sink in a, in a dark place. Very dark place. In a very, very dark place. All right, I think I'm getting there. Dude, you got a lot of mileage to cover here. Whoa. All right, but you can yeah, see these... now. <laughs> oh, yeah. These bigger minis just take a while. Yeah, they do. I honestly, I knew from the size of this guy, I'm like, we're pretty much going to get base coat and dry brushing going for the bark area. But you can see now it's gotten that brown tone happening on it. Um, but it's not like a cheerful brown. <laughs> Which is what I wanted. So that's good. That, that's... <laughs> That, that dark and menacing practice. brown. Yes. All right. So I'm going to cap or cover or close my chocolate brown and rinse my dry brush and give the mini just a couple heartbeats to dry. Because what you don't want to do is go back in and keep doing wet on wet because you'll start pulling the paint off, which is why you need to yeah. be careful with what you're doing there. Um, oh, and of course, I just saw a spot of lime. <laughs> Yeah, that's basically what happened with me. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, I think I got the dry brushing done. Oh, well, I'm now I gotta go back with the black. Right. Go in here and you know, dab it with a little bit of extra brown. 
It'll yeah. still work. We'll just let that dry now. Just let it do its thing. It'll be Look. good. Thank you. Uh, Dwayne, Dwayne Egg 75 says, tree ain't looking good. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that very much, Lee. All right. And so there I'm is gonna... much, much more to come. For those of you who are joining us, because uh, we are halfway through the show. Hi. How did that happen so quickly? Uh, we're working on a blighted tree ant, uh, because Voronika, yay! Cheering for a dark lord. Who knew? Ta-da! Her! Yeah. Her! She mine! <laughs> She's mine! She I mine! Mean <laughs> adorable. The most adorable of dark lords. <laughs> Careful. I I like it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nope. They look They look amazing. I cannot wait. I really want to see her in game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm excited for Wednesday. You know what I'll be doing once I'm like, leave me alone, I'm unlocking Nika. <laughs> Listen, I told you the story about the day that Orkira came out. Uh-huh. And uh, for, for those of you who, haven't, who weren't there or haven't heard the story, the TLDR is I was already working as an employee of C&E. And the Wednesday that Orkira came out, I was a guest on Mars's show at mm-hmm. one o'clock. And it was me anxiously waiting because the rollout was happening. And I didn't get a chance to unlock Orkira before I went on Mars's show. And so I didn't get a chance to unlock my own character until like five hours after right? she came out. Right. And then, yeah, there was a lot of me uh, aggressively playing the game. I am usually the person who sits back and I'm like, all right, I'm going to do a few things. I'm yeah. going to do stuff in the background. And I I was hardcore. How quickly can I get through this so that I can get my baby yep. in the game? <laughs> yep. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So while on Wednesday, is... we're going to we're going to leave you alone around noon so that you can unlock more as quickly as possible. Leave me on. Um, OK, so now we're going to go back to well, I'm going to go back to the stone and I'm going to take green gray and dry brush the green gray onto the stone to start making it look like, you know, a stone, a stone, a stone. Uh, and. Ezra since you asked, I will help provide. A, yes, we do have a spotlight. We have both. Um, we have both the champion spotlight blog as mm-hmm. well as, and it's, I'll, I'll just grab that link. I beg your pardon, sir. Oh, hi, kid. No. <laughs> I, just, I just heard the, <gasps> and I didn't know what was going on. Well, neither of us uh, were oh, expecting. <laughs> what, one of our wonderful mods, thank you, uh, Jordan and or Martin, Yay, probably both at the, the same mods, time, already put right? it into chat. If you go there, that is the um, the Voronika Spotlight blog, which has uh, pretty much all of the information about Voronika. It's it's pretty pretty thorough. Uh, yeah. But if you would like the two minute or less overview, there's also a link to the spotlight video in there that you can watch on the YouTubes. Yes, where you get uh, to say Voronika and Agaron, Agaron, Agaron's day. Agaron, thank you. Because <laughs> yes, I'm hearing everyone pers- saying it differently now. I'm just like, why? <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I spent. <laughs> So last year, when we started doing these champion spotlights, and I was the one who started to voice them, some of these names suddenly became very important. Right. And the amount of time I spent researching a Garon's day, I actually, I actually messaged Dustin and Devin from D4 at one point because they are hardcore lore hounds. Like D4 is very much uh mm-hmm. consistent with the lore and i'm like if anyone knows how to pronounce this holiday it's going to be yeah. the two of them <laughs> yeah yep so yeah i spent a very long time going a garon's day a garon's day a garon's day a garon's day hi kitty say hi hemi this is I mean, this Lord- is the one that hemlock's based off of this guy oh looking right at the camera look at that yeah the lurking writer says chat will now mostly be about cats don't mind us i mean i'm okay cool. with that I'm 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 fine with this factoid. I kind of figured that would be the case when you hopped on up. Okay, so I think am I? I don't want to overdo it and regret it because that would be bad. We are going to stick with green gray and going to dry okay. brush green gray onto this miniature now. All right. Uh, the lurking writer asked, "Was the stone part of the contents of the treants box, or something yep. you kit bashed?" Nope, it's something as part of the um, packaging. So it comes. The treant will come with a stone. It comes with a base, and it comes with a okay. treant. 
screen what? right. Don't do this to me. Oh I no. I can't get it open. Oh, no. oh, Careful. Give me a second. Mm-hmm. Careful. All right. Oh, this is this is making me nervous. Oh no. Split. This is bad. Okay, let me hear I'm gonna fiddle with my focus now. Hold on. Do a hey, take cam. as long as you want. I'm still trying to open the green gray without ca causing a panic. <laughs> yes, I don't want to figure. Ah ah I did it, and I only got a finger full of green. Not gray. bad. Okay, that's hey. The finger can wash off. I I just didn't want all over my shirt. Okay. Uh, Severin be. Blaine is asking, can we see the many toe beans? I mean, you know, keep an eye. Cats are one of those things in where if, if we ask for something in specific, you're, you're never going to get it from a cat. Yeah, so you're cool. just going to have to hang out and watch and see what happens. Can you do paw? Can you show paw? No? No paw? No. Okay. Nope. No paw. That's okay. Give yeah. it a little bit of time. Exactly. Um. So now I'm going across, and this is where I'm really starting to bring out the details and the bark and the higher points. So I'm being very light-handed at this point with okay. the, what is this again? Green gray. But you can see it's kind of taking on more of like a sickly dead tree effect as opposed to a thriving living tree. Yeah. Especially the green gray because it is such a, yeah. a muted green. Yep. So take some time going around here with this. Graphic Wolf wants to know, is Helen okay with a big paw being, being that close? No, oh, she's thrilled. She loves cats. Yeah. I mean, it's the paw and not the claws. Yeah. <laughs> I got to say, Hemingway is very good about not using his claws. So That's good. I know Helen is safe. Your cats are furry. remarkably sweet. They, I, I have definitely looked out with cats. Yeah. Absolutely remarkably sweet. Yeah. Hi, baby. You want nose boops? Nose boops. Snoodle boop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you like those, huh, Papa? Oh, yes. And yes, Chad, it's okay if you just want to talk about the cat. That's fine. Mm -hmm. You can even ask questions about Hemingway if you want. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I enjoy watching the cat from a distance. Mm -hmm. From a distance. I watch a cat. I have a weird the slight cat to The cat looks them. cute to me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all we can say. Exactly. And that's all. No, we and don't eat Helen. Do. No. <laughs> <laughs> you are so sweet. You are doing so well, kitty. He's like, what's this? I pick it up with my mouth. Uh, oh, the lurking writer asks, you've chosen mm -hmm. to go for the dark decaying version of the tree end, which is yes. perfect for Spooktober, mm -hmm. uh, but also for Voronika. What color choices would you make if you wanted to allude to winter's crest or Christmas? So happier colors. <laughs> mm. I guess it depends on what kind of base bark you want it to have to look like. Um... You know, if, if you want it to be more of a, because trees, they go dormant in the wintertime. Mm. So paler browns for winter. And you can even do fun things like some light dry brushing with white to sort of connotate frost. Um, if you want. I guess it depends on the type oh. of the tree. Ooh, and then, and then you paint the rock white so it's a snowball mm -hmm. instead of a rock. Mm -hmm. There you go. That would be fun. Yeah. That would be a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, Severin Blaine wants to know how old is Hemingway? Hey, five. Oh, here we go. You're going to know you, you stink. -er. Can I show your mitts off? <laughs> what a tease. Here we go. What there's, a tease. There's the mitts, sort of. He's got massive paws here. Let me, let me hold your hand. You can see. This is my palm and this is his paw. He's got big paws. A big cat. He a big Super boy. big cat. He big Maine Coon. But yeah, Hemi uh, is five. 
Rough Rider 91 wants to know, how do we get Dylan into the chat lobby for a Voronika song on a Bardic Inspiration next week? <laughs> um, I mean, Dylan is busy. Poor Dylan. Dylan. Is very busy. Yeah. But, you know, we could always pass along the request for a Voronika song. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're no always happens. looking for no suggestions. I, yeah, no promises, but I am always willing to take and pass along suggestions. There you go. Why why is it always under the arms? That I know, right? Problem. And, and again, lots of arms on this guy. Yeah, so lots of armpits. Mm-hmm. And oh, elbows. The armpit game is strong. Mm-hmm. Now I'm not worrying too much about the beard here. I'm working around the beard at this point. Because we'll do something else with the beard. Oh, Ow. look at all this fantastic texture that's coming out now. I love it. Oh, yeah. What do you think, Ham? You approve? You approve? Yeah. Cool. Oh, this is interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Conradus81 says, do your cats have an addiction problem with soft food and cheese? I've, I've heard of cats and cheese before. No. Um, no, I mean, they get wet food at night. Because, you know, meats are good for cats and everything like that. So it's dry food in the morning with them to help with their teeth. And then wet food to help with the hydration and making sure they're getting a good high protein count. Um, so they're not like overly addicted to it or pecky about it. They will eat other food in that respect. This one, sir, my morning toast, he will steal it. Like this fellow has actually run away with a full on bag of hot dog rolls and took a bite out of each one. He's my carb kitty. Um, so I have issues with him going after carbs. I wonder, oh, this might be mean actually, but not, mm. not really mean. So uh, Luke and I have been not on a keto diet really, but we've switched over mm -hmm. to keto bread and, and a couple of other keto products to try to cut down on the carbs and the sugar. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, we, we get into that age. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, we're not getting to that age. We're at that age. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to admit it. We did. I wonder if one of these days, if you put out a whole bunch of buns, keto buns oh, and let the cat took them because you know, like our keto buns are good. They 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 don't taste the same though. They uh -huh. definitely do not taste like regular bread, but they're good. Uh -huh. But I bet you the first time one of your cats decided to chow down on a piece of keto bread, that might change their mind. Hey, <laughs> they you might go on a keto stop. diet? Excuse me. <laughs> oh, you're just gonna be cute and sleep. Okay. Aww. You slept. You slept. I and there shouldn't be anything in the keto bread that would be bad for cats because right. it's just fiber. That's funny. Oh, well, that might not be so great for him in terms of like later on down the line. Well, yeah, you, you definitely have to uh, prevent lots yeah. of, you know, lots of a bun being consumed. Yeah. But but my, if I had to lay money down, if I had to lay a nickel down, I'd say the first time one of your cats bit into a keto bun, eh, they're not eating any more of that. Yeah, it was that craving. <laughs> hmm. so, what is proposition? <laughs> interesting proposition to be continued. I love the texture on this one. There's so many neat crews. So Lex the cat says, one of my friend's cats loved watermelon so much. If he ever caught you eating it without sharing, he'd shove his face in your mouth and try to get it. <laughs> uh, and the devil crayon says, we had a cat that would do that to bread, tear into the bag and eat a bite of crust off the whole loaf. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And yep. uh Conradus81 says, I get smacked when I don't give them things. It's kind of funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, well, you know, I mean, it's kind of funny because they're cute and it's, you know, paws. But yeah, but every once in a while, that's not cute anymore. <laughs> I mean, especially since I now have to deal with a bunch of squirrels who have uh, oh, become Lord, yeah. very 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 needy i thought it was the one that you took a picture of was like begging outside the door oh that's that's an hourly occurrence that oh, happens all goodness. the time yeah yeah no the one that i got the video of trying to break into the apartment yeah that was that mm. was special mm -hmm. but no on a regular basis they're they just they will sit on we've got two outdoor rocking chairs 
and they'll mm-hmm. sit on the one on the top of it because they know that they get a better vantage point and also uh, Luke is more likely to see them. And, uh-huh. and one of them will even force the rocking chair to rock back and forth a little bit <gasps> so that so that it's like you can be seen. But yeah, they'll just come up to the window and they'll sit on their back legs and do the gopher thing and look really uh-huh. cute. But but do not be fooled. Excuse They're me, insistent little buggers. Oh, I'm sure. Ooh, Stalker29, new player here. Hey, welcome. Hello. Only been at it for two to three weeks. I don't have champions to swap at seats three, nine, and 12. For the time gate, I got the options of Zorbu, Lanya, and Brig. Which champions would you recommend? Thank you. Brig. Ooh, yeah, I'm kind of going Brig, Brig too. So Zorbu is a fantastic DPS, but is going to take a lot of work. So, and, yeah. and if you're willing to put in the work, Zorbu is really, 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 really good. But Zorbu, you have to, you have to use a lot. Um, I think Brig is the best bet in that one, honestly. Yeah, I use Brig a lot. He's yeah. just a solid support. Yeah. He's got a lot of flexibility on where you can put him. Yeah. Um, he's not picky about a lot of things. So especially for a mm-hmm. newer uh, player like you, it's it's very easy to position him. And even if you position him wrong and i use that in hardcore air quotes yeah he's still going to be really effective yeah. so yeah exactly it's it's a good early on day yeah. for sure champion that's what i'm looking for i'm like the... yep i'm trying to remember what seats they're in i mean in this case i think it's less about the seats and more about go for brig mm-hmm yeah, at the moment, I'm trying to power up both Dahani and um, not Valentine. Ah. Viconia? No. The Black Dice Society DPS. Tatiana? No. Uh, no, she's... Uh, Nahara? Nahara, thank you. There we go. <laughs> Going through. Uh, so many uh, champions that have their names end in an ah. Yep. And I say that as one of those people as a champion whose name ends in ah. So as does mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I've been I've been working on uh powering up both Dahani and Nahara. Oh nice. Uh, for a while now. Every once in a while I just I just throw one or the other into a uh-huh. a team and I just have them going at it just to power them up. I've got yeah. Dahani up to paint brush uh wave the Ooh. brush eight. Nice. Um I haven't looked at how many memories Nahara has unlocked yet, but it's it was getting up there. That's good. Okay, oh, we I'm... got more new players. Uh, Hi. Roars969. Hi. Hi there. I'm a new player as well. Welcome. Glad you could join us. Welcome to our uh, chill paint and slay and give advice to new players stream. Nice. Uh, I got Shandy, Strix, and Selise on time gates. Ooh, a bunch of S's. But I already have Shandy, and she's equipped with blue and purple items. Should I go for her to get better items, or Selise, that's a new champ for me? I highly recommend a new champ, because there are a bunch of ways that you can get new gear for existing champions, but you're going to want to build up a deep roster of champions to help out with uh, adventure variants and other uh other adventures that are going to limit your champion choice and there's stuff down the line like patrons and unlocking multi-party mode that require you to have a certain number of champions unlocked yeah so every time you get especially a free time gate uh when it offers you champions that you do not have i 100 percent recommend go for a champion you don't have even you know you get to like i've unlocked 99 of the hundred and Four hundred and five. How many? We have over a hundred. So, over a hundred. Over a hundred. Let's go with that. Yeah. Don't ask me that right now because my brain's already far advanced. Yeah. I'm like um, too many numbers. That's but what Kelly should get, be saying. You'll get towards the end and be like, oh, you know, am I really that interested in these champions, or I don't need that many more? Unlock mm-hmm. all of them because yeah, there are going to be part. things like, yeah, like um, like Strahd is a patron that you can do patron challenges for a little down the line. And Strahd requires you to have champions with an intelligence of 12 or higher. And a lot of us, intelligence is a dump stat. So you want as many champions as possible. And I 100% agree with getting Solis. She is a solid tank and uh, getting the 
uh, working on getting the entire set of the Rivals of the Waterdeep is going to be really, really good. So, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, so with oh. that, I'm going to jump to German. <sighs> the one with a really long name, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> German mm -hmm. Camouflage Bay's World War II mm -hmm. from the model line from Vallejo Paints, which is really just like a nice yellowy beige color is what it boils Yellow down beige. to. Yep. So we're going to dry brush that. I am just going to hold off a little bit longer to make sure my last layer of color is okay before jumping into it. We're going to do that. Okay. And then from there, we'll start doing, uh, I think we're doing pretty decently. We'll probably get into yeah. doing, hopefully, the knot work on the top of the head and maybe the eyes. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see we're making happens. some good progress today. Yeah. Like Thank always, you. uh, we're not going to hurry, you know, if we've got to gonna... add time to one of these minis, that's fine. We're not in a rush. Play? We're going to play? Yes. Show off them paws. Show off them paws. <laughs> Come on. Show it off. Be cute. Be cute for the camera. Sing for your supper, cat. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Oh, um, and they've realized, they're like, oh, wait, hold on. I'm being yeah. used to be cute on camera. Yeah. I will now stop. Oh, I just saw... Um... Genemesis asking, it's not sure if it's part of the show, but how did Vornika get such high wisdom for Druid Dark Lord? <laughs> Hi, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Not a Druid spoiler Dark there. Lord. Yeah, Druid Dark Lord. That, that'll do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that Druid wisdom. Mm-hmm. Druid and clerics, man. Yeah. That's, that's pretty much the why of it. All right, so I'm going to go in with this. Don't you touch that. I see you looking. <laughs> I we see all see you your cat. Look at that. I saw that. I have to say, as as a cleric main, one of my favorite moments from the Black Knight Society game from uh, yesterday? Was it yesterday? Mm. Oh, geez. From Gen Con. Yeah, and this yesterday. is not yeah. a spoiler. So for those of you who haven't seen it yet, I'm not about I'm not gonna spoil anything. Um was when Brother Uriah had to do a wisdom saving throw mm -hmm. and rolled like a 40. Yeah, it <laughs> was ridiculous. It was but beautiful. those are high level characters. Yeah. Um, he is a cleric, which immediately means he's got a high wisdom. Mm -hmm. And his magic item that he got as a gift was the Book of Exalted Deeds, which lets your wisdom get over 20. Um, I'm familiar <laughs> with the Book of Exalted Deeds because Penelope lent it to Arkira so that she could mm -hmm. have it for Court of the Raven Queen. Yeah. It's it's a nice book. Um, and then nice your book. bonus to saving throws is ridiculous. Yeah. Ridiculous. So if you yeah. roll okay, and this is true for any high-level character that has a, a maxed out stat somewhere, you know, if you ask a, a rogue about a dexterity saving throw if you ask you know wizards about intelligence saving throw everybody's kind of got their stat but yeah it's, mm -hmm. it's always fun when the unassuming cleric is like i got a 40 yeah <laughs> exactly exactly there were some good rolls yesterday too Whoa, that was a fun yeah. one to watch it really was yes i really enjoyed it yeah and i think that's up uh i think the vods are available from the Gen Con Twitch, I think. Don't yeah, quote me on Tanya that. Uh, tweeted earlier this morning how certain timestamps uh, with a link. If you go to the timestamps along with the link that she had in her tweet, oh. you can catch the VOD that way. Oh, because they don't stop the, the stream yeah. in between yeah, shows, it was perpetual. so you have to go. All yeah. right, okay. So check that out. Um, is my recommendation if you want to see what happened yesterday. Yeah, it's a little annoying, but at least, you know, it's nice to have yeah. uh, the VOD at all. So mm -hmm. and I do understand with stuff like that, it's often easier to just keep the stream going than to shut it yeah. down and bring it back up. So, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm like very grateful for it because I think I'm, I have to uh, capture the I want to catch the clip announcement. Let me clip it. Yeah, I want to do. Yeah, it's not often that you get your character announced oh. at a major convention. I was just like, oh my God, that's actually a thing. Ah, yeah. Ah. Yeah, there, there we go. go. 
Uh, okay. Um, oh, that was the gene nemesis mm -hmm. wisdom question that led us down that path. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, yeah. Any other questions, though? I'm just seeing everybody talk about um, Strawberry Paladin. I'm currently unlocking or Orkira in my free time gate. Nice. I may be biased, but good for you. You've made the right choice. You've made, frankly, the only choice. <laughs> All right. And for those of you who are wondering, because we did get uh, some more people coming in from the show, yes, uh, from the game, the I game. should say. Uh, one of the things that we are doing is if you come to our Discord, discord.gg slash idle champions. Drink. Uh, we have a paint and slay channel where you can find all of the details on what you need to join in with us when you're painting any of these minis. Um, there's a general list, you know, here are supplies that you need basically for any mini. And then you're just going to need some, the mini and some specific things for what we do. And the general list includes a paint set and a set of brushes. And the paint set will last you for oh, dozens wow. of bunches of oats of minis. Yeah. Um, I, the one that I bought is the same one that we suggest in the channel. And I'm still, I still have plenty. Yeah. But the other thing that we are doing is we are using the uh, Chimera paint kit that you can get from WizKids, which mm -hmm. comes with a whole bunch of these little pots. So uh, V is showing us how to use those pots on other midis because they Still give you- a good amount left, yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Especially since the, the paint in these are, are relatively thick. So you get yeah. you get a lot for what your brush is doing. I, I mean, we got done with the the chimera, and I don't think any of my Three pots were the even way, still full. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and and that included some mixing, and that included yeah. some uh, spillage. Uh, yeah. So yeah, for those of you who are wondering, that's that's what we're using with with these little guys. But you can use uh pretty much the if you get the Vallejo set that we recommend in the Discord, you'll be all mm -hmm. set. Yeah. You can see all these details coming out now. Oh, this yeah. Decrepit old tree. Gnarly old tree. The gnarliest. Ah, Bemory. I'm loving Deacon in slot one. Big fan of Doom. Doom. Yes. Yes, Doom is so much Doom. fun. Orkira. Uh, I, I wish Orkira and Deacon could be in the same slot, but, uh, but yeah. Deacon is another one of those support champions that's really, really good to have. They're because once again, they're kind of easy yeah. to use. They're very flexible where you can put put them, and they've got enough of a speed boost going on that they're just yeah, lurking rider. I actually use Deacon as a support champ sometimes, not just for his speed. He mm -hmm. he's a solid support yeah. champion. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Rough Rider ninety one wants to know any chance we can have a community community challenge during V Voronika's event. We can try. So, for for those that don't know, we sometimes would run these community challenges, um, in where the community would have a week in order to donate their um, the challenge coins. Essentially, if you if you look down and you see the C and E challenge coins that you just earn by watching Twitch. Mm -hmm. And if you reach the goal, we would do something. It was often, you know, release a fun chest for everybody. They were fun to do, but they were surprisingly persnickety, um, especially with the math, because we would math out, all right, because you can only give 2,000 of your points per show. Yeah. So we would math out, okay, we're going to have this week be the week. We have this many shows. We average this many hundreds of viewers per show. If everybody gives this much, this is what our max can be. We'll move it back and forth a little bit to give everybody some wiggle room and go from there. You know, so the napkin math kind of works out. But if a show gets postponed because, you know, stuff happens mm -hmm. um, or if, you know, something goes wrong, it's very easy to either miss the goal or have the goal suddenly not obtainable and it's not easy to alter the challenge once it's started and 
you basically have to um you have to you can't just end the challenge you have to like delete it in order for everybody to get their challenge coins back and it it was just a surprising amount of work for that now i'm not saying they won't come back right for it's it, it's a fun thing to do. And frankly, it was probably the best thing that we could come up with for things to do with your channel points because channel points, oh. they're fun. But, you know, coming up with, with useful things is sometimes hard. Um, I, I can say with a surety, because I'm one of the people who helps run the channels, uh, we're probably not going to do one for Voronika's event just because it's it's happening it's pretty quick. Right around the corner, yeah. It's it is right around the corner. So yeah, it's it's a good idea that we're still kind of kicking around to to make it work because the problem with it right now is if it goes perfectly, it's great. Mm -hmm. When's the last time something has gone perfectly on Twitch? <laughs> So there you go. There you yeah. go. I think the last time we did it, we ended up just giving out the chest and canceling the mm -hmm. event yeah, because by Thursday case. it was, yeah, we had, yeah. so Amazon had an, uh, a problem. And so a, a couple of shows got uh, postponed because we couldn't connect to Twitch because Amazon yeah. was having yeah, issues. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. The servers and all so, went down. It was like, what the heck mm -hmm. is going on with Twitch? It was just forked. Yeah. Twitch was just not happy. Um, so yeah, we would, we were reducing the goal, but you can't manually reduce the goal. You, we basically had to keep announcing over and over and over again that no, that's yeah. not actually the goal. It's, it's a reduced yeah. number. And then we that's had to right. do it again. And it was just, it was, it was more work than it was worth. So we just gave out the chest. Yeah. God, I forgot about that. Okay. So I think I'm pretty happy with the various layers yeah. I have here because you can see all this lovely barky texture, not arf arf, but you know, bark on the tree, bark. It's also amazing when you remember how much uh, that when it was covered in black, mm -hmm. how dark everything was. Yeah. But all yeah, the details and so all much. the knots and everything are really yeah. coming yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I definitely want the bark itself to now dry because I have a good four layers of paint on here. I want to make sure before I do more detail work on the bark areas themselves that it is dry. So I think what we'll do is let's move on to check my notes here. We'll do some detail work. Mm. Well, let's do the eyes. I think we're good for doing the eyes now. So we're going to want burnt red. Burnt red. To get us going. So we'll do That's burnt red in the eye sockets first. Yeah. Where's my detail brush? My detail brush ran away. Get oh no. Do you work? Come on. Do you work. Sorry, I keep leaning out of frame. Apparently, every time I open one of these pots, my body just twists into weird shapes as I am afraid. Mm. So this burnt I red am is a feared. gorgeous Merlot color red. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So what we're going to do is in his eye socketies right here is paint that up red. With the and it's been red. a while since we've actually done this, but mm -hmm. um, you and I have done the same thing, which is turn the mini upside down. Yes. And what does that do that helps with the eye sockets? When you, because um, your brain likes to do this thing, it's called matrixing. So that's why when you look at um, wood panels and you see a couple of knots pulled together, it looks like there's like a creepy face staring back at you. It's because mm. your brain is recognizing the pattern of the human face. And it does this all the time. Um, and it actually, when it comes to painting minis and such, it makes it tricky to try and get balance because your brain is looking at the face as a whole. So when you turn the mini upside down, you are now seeing the two separate shapes of the eyes as opposed to seeing the face itself. So it, it's sort of a way to um, trick your brain to see what needs to actually be painted and make it easier for a more aesthetic balance of the two bits that you're trying to paint. So that's why it helps to flip them upside down when you go to do eyeballs. Yeah. yeah. And I can say from experience, it's immediately apparent. Like it, mm -hmm. if you don't try it, it can, it can sound like, oh, that sounds like a good idea, but I can't quite picture it in my head. And then the first time you turn the mini upside down and go for the eyes, boo, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh no, this actually makes yeah. so much more sense. It really does. Uh, so now... 
We've got these the eyes are big enough that I didn't even yeah. want to go for the the toothpick, right? Okay, so that's the burnt red. I want that to dry a touch so we can. Is that all I'm using this for? One moment, please. Yeah, uh, yeah, Conrad is 81. Trees with red eyes. Uh, these are going to be blighted trees. So, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, this fellow lives in Koshmar. And uh, Koshmar is not a very friendly, happy place. It's, you know, you look at one thing, it looks like something. You look to the side, and suddenly it's something else. Mm hmm. Which is as was designed. <laughs> that just means it has depth. Yeah. All right. Doopy 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 doo. So when that is taken care of, we're then going to go to the dark vermilion and oh. sort of add dots to the eyes. You don't want to cover the eye completely. You still want to leave that red, like a rim of mm -hmm. the burnt red around the outside of the eyeball. So it's sort of, um, you know what? I use my hand first so I can show you what I'm talking about. Kind of a laser beam mind. dot in the middle? Sort of, but not exactly. Let me show you what I mean. All right, so here's my hand. And we're going to call this the eyeball shape of the treant. Right there. Okay. Mm. So we have that going. What we're going to do is go in with the vermilion red. And keep it so that you're still covering a good portion mm. but you're leaving a rim of the burnt red around the outside or a ring rather around the rim of the eye is what i'm trying to say all right so it'll add some depth but it's also going to make those eyes pop a little bit more okay yeah no we're talking i'm just going to read off uh garwar said something very nice I just want to say I couldn't make it to the whole show, but I'm here now, and it looks like you're holding a messed up piece of driftwood, so you did an amazing job. Thank you. That's what I, I was going for. Don't sit on my keyboard. Driftwood. Don't sit on my keyboard. That's a no. But I'm thinking about it, Mom. But what if yeah, I right? did? But what if I did? Hmm? But, but why not? <laughs> Here's looking at you, kid. Dot, dot. Oof. Trying to get in there in the eyes. Yeah, the tree end from the salt marshes of doom. This is Conrad 81. I'm so glad that you're having fun with Deacon. Deacon is so fun. Yeah, Deacon is awesome. Hey, that's not going to help me. I know you want scritches, but hitting my hand, holding them in, that's not helping. Speaking of Garwar, I will take this moment to say, hey, after our show. It's Star Wars Guide to Everything. So Yay. stick around. If you've got questions about Idol Champions and uh, you've got uh, things that you want help with, Gar Wars probably got a guide for that. And if he doesn't, mm -hmm. you can definitely come to his show right after ours. Woo! It's a full Friday of excellent shows and Gar War gets to cap it off. As one wants. Ooh. All right, so let me check out the knots in the mouth here. Oh, yeah. Okay, so there are some knots I am going to want to go back in and deepen with a touch more of black, which we can do with a detail brush. So we're mm -hmm. going to go into the mouth and into the knots and just deepen the black again because some of the dry brushing... How did you pull up that window? <laughs> If you're if you're just joining us, we've been joined by a cat who has decided that they're taking over the production of the show. I'm not even Thank touching you. this. I don't know what he has selected to open. I'm like, I don't want to find out <laughs> Wait until after. So, yeah, I'm just going to go back in with going to go back in black. Dun, da, 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 Can't. Da, da, da. <laughs> and that's all we can do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, there are a lot of knots on this thing. There are. So we're just going to poke the knots. The things you say when you're painting D&D &D minis. Mm -hmm. I mean, why not? And I'm just going to aim for the dead center of those knots to really deepen the knot effect happening here. Is 
but yeah, it's definitely going to go around and just uh, getting that into the recess. Yeah. Uh, as a Smith uh, 2601, the fun of this show is you paint along with, with, with both of us, but also me, because I'm a beginner. Uh, and trust me, it's not going to take that long before you're going to be pretty happy with your own minis. I mean, mm -hmm. the first show that we did was the Mykonids. And I had had very little mini painting before that. And all of my mini painting had been just me messing around with paints. No one had really ever given me any instruction. I'd seen a couple of the paint night, uh, the paint night streams, and that's about it. And... After the second episode of the Mykonids, like I am still super proud of those Mykonids. They look they great. Be. Yeah. Bye. So do not, uh, do not be afraid of joining us mm. and doing your own minis because that's that's half the fun. Exactly. And uh, B fail says I can't stop looking at the cat. I mean, same. That's right? fair. Yeah. That's he super just, fair. Uh, he just decided he wanted to alley up, so I don't know where he's gone, but. He'll be back. Stay tuned. What? Stay tuned. There will be more. There will be more cat. You gonna talk? Huh? <laughs> what happened? Was that your cat chittering? He's having a hairball right now. <laughs> oh no! Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope the microphone's not picking this up. Sorry, folks. Uh, the microphone picked up what sounded like a chittering noise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm, good. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we had the joy of the cat presence for the vast majority of this show. Mm -hmm. And and now we will wish, wish them well on their journey for the rest of the day. <sighs> we're almost out of time anyway. We're yeah, in the last like yeah, nine exactly. minutes of the show. So it makes sense. We're, we're wrapping but, things up anyways, as it is. Sometimes you're, when your cat's got to go, your cat's got to go. Right. Plus, you know, long hair cat. It's, uh, mm -hmm. it yeah. happens. Hey, we should all just be grateful. This didn't happen on camera. On screen. Are you kidding me? If the second I heard the hook, if I heard the hark, hark, you were sitting on my desk. No, that cat would be off my desk. Mm hmm. That, that I would not have had that happen. Nope. No. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Also, I could I could totally see a very quick and the camera's off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I would just vamp. Mm -hmm. And once again, that would be a fair price to pay for having exactly. uh, almost two hours of, of cute kitty on the desk. Did I get that one yet? I don't think I got that one yet. This is the fun game of like, did I get that knot? No, I did. Mm. There I am. All right. If there are any other questions, definitely let us know because we are in the last couple of minutes of yes. the show. So if you do have any questions um, about Idol Champions, about Voronika, about mini painting, about cat hairballs, go ahead and put those in <laughs> chat with question in big capital letters. And one of our amazing mods, Jordan and or Martin, will grab that and pass that along so that we can do our best to answer your question. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and yeah, if you want to ask Garwar questions in the chat, sure. I, I don't know if Garwar is still in the chat or if he will answer those questions, but I'm just looking over a chat and seeing questions for Garwar. Ask yeah. each other questions. That's also yeah. fun too, especially on a, a, a free time gate weekend. Yeah, absolutely. I'm actually surprised. I haven't seen more people in chat asking about their, their free time gate selections. Maybe, maybe we've just instructed enough people that they... They now just know. They now oh, just the know to go for Orkira every single time. <laughs> mm. Maybe, maybe. Oh, oh, Garwar says, I'm frantically trying to update my overlay for today. Oh, I fair. feel that. I feel that. Fair. Good luck. Yep. <laughs> okay, first off, Lurking Writer, I am not vamping. I am giving you valuable information that you need to know. Second, I will not be doing it in my Barovian Strahd accent because we have Voronika here and she does a way better accent than I do. Is there something you <laughs> wanted? You called? <laughs> there was a disturbance in the mist. Yes. <laughs> my Strahd is just, is, is a very pale imitation of your accent. Strahd, Strahd's the pale imitation of himself. Who is he kidding? There's such yes. an affectation. <laughs> 
He just does that to sound more important. And look what that Also, is. who I now hear in my head for Strahd is Jason Carl, Jason. who does not do an accent, but I do not have his he, voice. He so. has a he has a, a pattern to how he speaks as Strahd that I think is fantastic. <laughs> oh yeah, it's so good. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let me see here. How are we doing? I think we're there. I am I am so covered in paint. Today yeah. has just been one of those paint days. Oh well. <laughs> okay. Whatever Hemingway did had paused my clock because you're saying, oh, it's only so much time left. I'm like, wait, why is it still 4.33? <laughs> no, what we've only got about do? five minutes left. So we have to get off for, for Garmar. Yes, okay, cool. So you're going to have to be my time clock because somehow my clock has stopped. I don't know why. I will. I will. sat on. Cool. I will help with that. Uh, Evil Turnip One says, looking forward to Radiant Stories. I only get to see the streams live when I'm lurking and working. Oh, thank you. Tonight is a rerun because, you know, Gen Con's happening. Gen Con. So there's a lot of people who are out of town and a lot of stuff happening. So tonight yes. is a rerun of episode one. So if you missed out on episode one, come by. Any of us who are not at Gen Con will be in the chat, hanging out, answering questions. That includes me. Uh, and you can see episode two on the um, Be Never Ending YouTube. And yeah, and we'll be back next week with a live episode. Um, you know, gray all shaped. I've continued to think about getting a camera specifically for my mini view because yeah, I can show my mini, you know, but you don't get the same kind of detail because this yeah. is meant for faces. Yeah. But I haven't quite come up with a reason beyond paint and slay where I would need that kind of camera and they're not cheap. They're not cheap. They really are not yeah. cheap. Yeah. So stop thinking, do it. Hey, listen, if if you've got the couple hundred bucks for a camera you want to throw, no, don't don't give me money. Don't give me money. Um, but yeah, that's that's basically what it is. If I'm gonna pay that much money for a camera, for a nice, nice camera, yeah. uh, I need to use it for more than two hours a week. Yeah, that that's a very fair point. Um, okay, so actually at this point, we do kind of need to hold off with doing anything else because I don't want to start painting the mushrooms because this paint is still wet if we start learning the paint too much. All right. Not yeah. good. I don't want that to flake off. So next week, what we're going to do is go in and do detail work with the mushrooms, work on the base a little bit, get that all taken care of, work on the beard, absolutely, and get that squared away and also finish up the stone that I just tucked away. And then we'll go into having fun with kit bashing and doing the Spanish moss that's going to be draped and hanging off of these various bits and oops, even like, you know, a couple of the hands and the arms so we can have some fun with that one. I think that'd be a really cool way to do it and definitely make this a koshmarian treant for sure but yeah, yeah so I mean, that that treant down there is is the happy tree end we're we're not making that one no no mm -hmm. this one woke up on the wrong side of ravenloft <laughs> <laughs> uh, so interesting so i've got people in chat who are now making good suggestions about um uh, Roars969 is talking about using a phone camera. Mm -hmm. uh, Lightning Hawk is talking about a GoPro. So these are all decent suggestions. But here's the thing. Once again, it's buying another camera or or setting up my phone, which nice. I've done before and is not as effective for that kind of close-up as you would think. Um, one of these days. One of these days I will get mm -hmm. it. But I appreciate that y'all want to see my mini painting as, yeah. as close-ups. I will take pictures and put them up on, on the social media. The um, which you can find my Twitter right there and you can find V's Twitter even further below. Right there. Uh, yeah. Right there. And it's all right, right there. there. Yeah. And you know, Hey, just one last time, let's go through the things that we have a happening as FYI for everyone. Uh, you know, we, we, Hey, I got Nika. She's joining us on Wednesday. Um, so make so sure good. you come and check it out and unlock her mm -hmm. and all that goodness because when you do there's also when you check in the in-game store the blight druid voronika theme pack which will get you the blight druid skin as well as hemlock the Kamadan familiar who's got those lovely little snaky things that go on and he's a black leopard style like mean, oh god i just love how they got him pulled together uh and also don't forget happening on monday we have a familiar quest series, two familiars. They will be available in the game for purchase. Yep. And 
Look at these guys. Oh my gosh. I love the fact that they're in new forms for our returning players because in case you missed that announcement, along with the familiars being in game, we have a familiar quest series two coming back. And as soon as we get through Gale, because I want everyone a chance to see all of these cutie pies before I switch over. There we go. Uh, we have a cast joining us with Latia Jaquiz as the new DM. And we have M, Michelle, and Eugenio returning as their familiars. Gabe Hicks is joining us as Marvel. And for the first three episodes, we have guest player Hope playing our beloved Dottie. And that's going to kick in on August 15th, starting at 5 p.m. Pacific. So check it out, have some fun, and see what they're going to get into for this part of the series. And you can even get a sneak peek of what some of those new familiars look like in game because yes. right now uh, new variants are in the game that just dropped on August 3rd and a bunch of those feature the new familiars. So you can go have some fun with them right away. Yay, absolutely do it. So that's it for this week. We're going to have some more fun with our uh, creepy treant next week, but you know, I want him to dry up a little bit for sure. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's it. So stick around, check out Garwar. I'm Thank sure you he's going to have lots of cool things. Yes. Oh, yeah. Thank you to Martin and Jordan for being our amazing moderators. Thank you to everybody in chat for hanging out with us today. And yeah, go have some fun with Garwar. Have fun, everyone. Thanks very much. Bye.